Greetings, folks. So, today we're going to do that tips and tricks video that one of my good friends that I've known for a while asked for. So, he wanted me to, when I did the Another Jam with the Les Paul video, and I played to that heavy metal backing track, he wanted me to go through how I played that solo. Now, <laughs> to do something like that, I would have to sit down and relearn everything that I played. And that would take me quite some time to do. Because in these backing tracks that I do, everything is improvised. I don't, you know, sit down and come up with something first. I just turn the track on and go for it. So I thought maybe I'll do some tips that I have that hopefully they'll help to help you guys. If you want to sit down with the backing track and just go for it and see what happens. So, let's turn our amp on. Or my amp on. Now my volume's turned down on the guitar. Let's rock the pedal up. So we got no volume. Okay. The most important thing for me, that was a big breakthrough for me, was to learn your root notes. Find your root notes on the guitar. So we'll do A as an example because it's the most easiest to memorize due to no sharps or flats. We'll do A root notes first. You're up here on this A power chord here. Now, root notes. Root A. Fifth fret E string. Your next root note is on the D string, seventh fret. Your next root note is on the B string, tenth fret. Your next root note, seventeenth fret high E. Another root, 15th fret low E, or not 15, 17, 19 on D, 22 on, on B string. And then, of course, learn your scales, right? Gotta learn your scales. A minor scale. We'll do this very slowly. And then backwards. Outlines that. Outlines that chord. Let's see if we can go further here. A, B, C, D, E, F, C, A, B, C, D, E, F, C, D, E, F, C, D, E, F, C, A. So see how, see how when you play your scale, all the root notes are there. Root. Also important, also important, learn your scales on one string. We'll take a, the A minor scale again because it's the easiest to do. Third string, second fret is an A note. So you go A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A. That's just the minor scale. Don't forget about pentatonic. Everyone knows the pentatonic. And what else we got here? Arpeggios. A minor arpeggio. Because most of the time when I play guitar, 
to a backing track, I want to do the most guitar-friendly backing track possible, which would be E minor or A minor. <laughs> Why is E minor so friendly? Because the guitar is tuned to E. 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 And of course, finding your E's. It's just easier that way. Now, arpeggios. I use my neck pickup anytime that I'm going to do an arpeggio. Just, I just like the sound of it. Let's get it right up on here, man. Got your third string, 14th fret. 13th fret, B string. High E, 12th fret. 17 high E. I will play it like that. I will pick through it. Or you can sweep it, you know. Sometimes I screw up and hit the wrong note. <laughs> Sweeping, remember, always let it come this way. I make this mistake all the time. I don't do it like I should. Now, sweet picking, you know, people want to dig at it. This is the basic technique, is to dig at it with the pick, let it fall into the strings. If you turn your volume down, you should be able to hear it. Turn your volume back up. That's picking through, sweeping. Then you gotta get this pull off here. So I'll normally go down, pick up, pick up one time, and then pull it off. What else do we do? What else do I do? Man, I don't know. It's hard for me to explain a lot of stuff, dude, because <laughs> I just turn it on and go for it. Like, when I played that one, that solo, or backing track jam, I think I started with something like, what did I do there? I just immediately find your roots. Now, once I hit here, that's one sc the scale on one string. See? Wrong note. That's what I'm doing there. I immediately start with my root, and then I'll go. Always resolve it on your root if possible. Unless you're trying to suspend it, then you'll need to start on a, a two, a four, or a six when I start. But resolve on a two, a four, or a six. So what does that mean? Two for your A minor scale, second note, which would be a B. So if you start this, that's a B there, right? So start this. You're suspending it to let it go further. So So what if we go to a six? How do we do that? Two, not a six. Let's do a four. Two, three, four. What note is that? The fifth of G, which is D. So let's do that. Bending, 
you know, practicing your bending will be paramount in expressing yourself along with vibrato. So bends, you know, you want to focus on this. Intonation is very important here. Now, to bend your strings, you don't want to do it with your fingers straight up like this. See, you can't see my thumb. You don't want to push up like this. Bring your thumb up, wrap it around that neck, get your fingers in this orientation here. Now, I put one, two, three. If I'm going to bend right here at this note, I'm going to put one, two, three. Three fingers down. Think of it as opening a doorknob. Now that's a whole step. Two, two frets. Do a half bend. A quarter. Step and a half. Focus on that intonation, focus on looseness. And then other stuff I do, hammer on and pull offs. Sliding. Sliding is very is very expressive too, because it doesn't it sounds more fluid. So say you want to do something in G. Let's just say G. Now that's going down the minor scale, the pentatonic. Sliding is very fun. Speed picking. Tensions on the pick will give you a different sort of attack. If I do it very lightly, I'm not gripping the pick. The pick is really pushing itself out of my finger. Now I'm going to tighten my grip. For some reason, I use my neck pick up when I speed pick. Like that's a that's a Petrucci thing I got from him. It's very sloppy most of the time, so you know don't look too far into it. And that's another thing I do that I'm sure we all do, you know. <laughs> Steal from my favorite players. All right, like this whole uh, this whole lick here. I turn the wah on, and I'll be playing something like. That's my that's my rip off of Kirk Hammett. That this the bar stuff I do all taken from Satriani. Steve Vai. John Petrucci, I can't really steal from him because I can't really do much that he does other than faking my way through the whole... You know, I can fake my way through some stuff. <laughs> and see, my sweet picking still wants to go down there. That's my most common arpeggio. It's the first one I learned. That one's cool that I, I use that one. I learned this one. A six string version.
Let's see. This whole thing, I do this sometimes. I haven't done it in a video yet, but. It's just this chord shape. But it's going through each string, each string group. Straight from Kirk Hammond, straight from Italian. Some of the bending that I do, like this one. You know what that sounds like? That sounds like Marty Friedman all day long. Tornado of Souls, you know? And there's another part, another example of one a scale on one string. I can't play all that solo yet, but I'm working on it. Let's see, anything else I do? Three note per string. Three note per string is very important when you want to play fast and you want to do something that really is it's easier to keep organized. Say you're down here. 19, 17, and 15. To do your three note per string stuff, most of the time this this is all going to be the same pattern, just string, string skipping, or string switching. And there's a very good example of this in that, that video I did, where I was playing something like a... Then when I hit this 20 second fret, I went like... Just that rip off Kerry Camel lick, you know? But that's fun. If you can memorize this on the high E string, the low E string is the same. And that really is, um, all that really is, is the highest, the highest string set of each mode. So this is the highest part of uh, C major. This is the highest part of A Dorian. B Phrygian. C Lydian. D Mesolydian. E minor, F sharp Locrian, and back to C major, or not C major, G major, A, A Dorian, B, B, uh, B Phrygian, then you're pretty much out, you got C Lydian here I think. Yeah, C Lydian. Then you're out. The same applies here at G major. To A Dorian. E uh, B Phrygian. C Lydian. D mix Lydian. E minor or Aeolian F sharp low key. Now we'll work on we'll work on a little bit of uh, doing some things with that. Say you're playing in here, you know. Here. Then you think, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? I don't know what to do. 
Think about your root notes. <laughs> As long as you resolve it on a root, a third, or a fifth, it's going to be a good resolution. Those kind of double stop bends, really good stuff. I use this whole diminished thing quite a bit. That gives you this kind of... The Joe Satriani stolen um, tapping with the edge of the pick. Now you can't see what I'm tapping with the pick. It's a very quick tap on the 14th fret. I think it is. Yeah, 14th fret of the G string. The rest is up to your fingers and your ear. And then when I'm playing clean stuff, some of my favorite stuff to do, people might call it cliche, is the inverted power chord. But man, I, everything I do, man, stolen from other players most of the time, or taken from lessons, such as Paul Gilbert, with this whole octave thing, root note thing. Take that power chord shape and move it through those root notes. Still sloppy today. Okay, now I'm working on this one. I wouldn't teach this, but I'm gonna try this, man. This is this is really difficult. See, dude, that's hard. That's hard. Right, let's see. You just can play it. Then it goes up to A. To B. You gotta change it. I can't remember all of it. That's a Satriani thing. I took that from Joe. Also, the whole sliding into notes thing from open strings. Bending, vibrato. All my three note per string stuff, you know, the legato fakery I do is all taken from Satch. The whole. And you can spread it out. It'll teach you how much you don't know your scales, too, when you're just guessing. I shouldn't be picking that much, because Joe does it when he does it. But there was that one thing where I came up, I was doing like a... Pinch harmonics. Pinch harmonics. Very expressive tool to use. For all you Zach Wild fans, you know what I'm talking about. So, I've had people ask me forever how you do a pinch harmonic. How do you do that? Look at my pick. And you can barely see that tip of the pick. Right? Choke up on that pick a little bit, grip it. You want to feel your thumb resting on that string. See, it's muted. 
I thought I'd take my hand away. Okay, so there's your harmonic. Now you need this to happen. But you can't get it right. You can't you can't shake it enough to get it. One, two, three. And depending where you do it on your string here, between your pickups, you're going to get a different note. Either the, the root, the major third, or the seventh, or the ninth. If you're doing just a single note like this, you can do it with this finger. But if you really want to grab it and shake the hell out of it, you're going to need to put all three fingers inside the frets. One, two, three. And that's your note you're going for. Really shake it. Now speed picking. Speed picking is a thing about picking. Keep your pick as close to the strings as you possibly can. Because if you don't, when you pick a note, when I, when I pick a note, let's say, or you, anyone, and you bring your hand up here, you got one more. You're wasting your energy in your arm. You're going to tire it out quick. Sometimes I'll do them that way. I'll put two fingers inside of one fret. That works too. And then of course there's the whole... Uh, that's just your... Uh, that's just... A scale on one string, but I'm adding an open G. Make sure you end on G because your next note up 14 is A. Be right back at your root. Now, this is cool too. Sometimes you can go out a little bit out of what you're playing and it sounds cool. Now stuff like that, see, I don't know what I'm doing there. All I know is... Like that. Slide to that 19. And then pull it all off. You only pick one time there. That thing, I do that a lot. That's from Petrucci. I stole that from him. Sorry, John, if you ever see this video. This is a pedal tone. This is your pedal tone. That repeats throughout the phrase. I once tried to steal one of JP's arpeggios until I realized I couldn't do it. Somewhere like that, I don't know. That's a little bit of a John thing. All the time, man. So when you're doing this kind of thing, you know, don't be afraid to go out, go outside that 15th fret. I can't stretch anymore, right? Tap it.
tapping, took that from Van Halen, Eddie Van Halen. So when I tap, I use this finger. A lot of people want to use their ring finger or middle finger to do it. I'll rest my thumb on top of the neck next to the body and mute out all the strings but these two because I know I'm going to be using those two to tap with, you know, and then you'll get this whole... Get you a trill going. Going at 19. Try to get it in time with each other. Now, then, you know, for in, in the beginning, you're going to be, you know, you'll be going. Maybe even slower than that. That is okay. You want to do it that way. Don't get on it because you don't know where you're going. You don't know what you're doing, really. And that's not to be, you know, you're a dick, man. No, it's not that. Take it slow like this. Intently listen, just like Steve Vai said. Intently listen to what you're doing. And eventually, it's going to come out. So, you're going to have to do that just here. Bring it up. As you move, excuse me, as you move down the neck, you're going to have to move this hand with it. And you can go everywhere, man. This is one that Angel Vivaldi does on his YouTube songs. Something like that. I'm just demonstrating, faking it. Is there anything else I do? Since he wanted my tips and tricks. Bar. Hold on. The bar. On the Floyd. Own that Floyd. Learn to use that Floyd and own it every time you do. So basically, you know, what I do. I should turn the volume up. Wow. I'll hit a harmonic anywhere. Say right here. Now, you need to learn to control your bar when you want to do precise bar dives. Like... That all comes with your ear. The most common is the bar dive. You know, you find a note. Shoot up the neck, pull the string off, and dive it down until it, it rattles out. All this stuff is taken from Satch and Vi. The way they do it. Joe will do it down here sometimes, too. Steve Vi can do un ungodly things on a bar. I don't know how he does it. He's just taking a lot of time to practice. I heavily abuse the pentatonic scale. All that kind of stuff. Which is just taking a scale and going through it. See if it sounds good. That's F sharp low in there. <laughs> just, you know, on, on a whim. And then my, my personal lick that I always play. Get that half step bend in there. And also, when you're playing an A minor, 
Can you do some kind of... It doesn't work, right? Always find those roots. Always find the root note. Pretty much what I have, you know, that I do, and I hope it helps everybody out here that watches this and my good buddy that messaged me on Facebook. I hope this helps you out, dude. Got any other questions, dude? Just hit me up. I'll try to help you make sense of all of it. Thanks for watching and keep it metal out there.